Yeah. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Elizabeth I is known as one of the greatest rulers in history of the British monarchy. But unlike many of the other rulers that have come to England, Elizabeth never expected to be queen. There were so many obstacles stacked against her that she never dared to hope she would rule her father's country. She just pressed onward. Elizabeth was known as a bastard child. Her siblings tried to get rid of her. She was nearly raped, and the politics of religion, marriage, and the economy all led to the young princess all led the young princess to death. Her cunning and witty abilities helped her rule for over 40 years. Elizabeth I was beautiful and she was constantly getting compliments from her many admirers from court. But like her mother, she knew her crown, her beauty would not keep her a crown. Elizabeth I was born to King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn was the second wife of King Henry VIII and was not thought of as a real queen. When King Henry VIII asked the Catholic Church for an annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, they refused. King Henry VIII broke away from the Catholic Church and established himself the head of the new Church of England. After marrying Anne Boleyn, the king and queen had a baby girl that they named Elizabeth. Many of the people in England that were still faithful to the Catholic Church refused to recognize Elizabeth as a legitimate child or an heir to the throne of England. When Elizabeth was three years old, her mother was tried, convicted, and beheaded on May 17, 1536. When told of her mother's death, Elizabeth showed little emotion, but her life was changed forever. Elizabeth was again known as a bastard child, was stripped of her title, position, and all hopes of the future. When their father married Jane Seymour a few months later, the king was finally given a son, Edward. When taken to their father, Elizabeth astounded the king by her wit, charm, and resemblance to himself. After this little encounter, the king realized that he would, he would have to reinstate his two daughters as heirs to the throne following Edward. <laughs> Several years passed and King Henry had remarried his sixth and final wife, Catherine Park. King Henry VIII died of an old jousting wound while married to this woman. Elizabeth, being now orphaned, went to live with her stepmother, Catherine Parr, to whom she got along, with whom she got along beautifully. One day, while playing in the garden with Parr and Seymour, her second husband, Elizabeth was grabbed by Parr and held while Seymour, while Seymour thrashed Elizabeth's dress, with dress into pieces. Seymour would go into Elizabeth's chambers in the early morning and tickle Elizabeth and slap her on the butt. When Catherine Parr died in childbirth with Seymour's baby, Seymour asked Elizabeth to marry him. Elizabeth saw that Seymour only wanted to be king and she told him she would never marry without the High Council's approval. Seymour decided to kidnap Edward, her younger brother, but was caught in an attempt, in an, in an attempt and was executed. Elizabeth was thought to be a conspirator against Edward because of her close relationship with Seymour. She now knew that no matter what she that no matter what she was not safe until she was queen. After the death of Edward VI at age 15, Edward's cousin Lady Jane Grey was appointed queen. After only 9 days of being queen, Lady Jane Grey and Edward Seymour were imprisoned, overthrown, and executed by Queen Mary and her followers. Queen Mary I, also known as Bloody Mary, burned hundreds of Protestant people. Many knew that Elizabeth was a Protestant and she made Elizabeth attend Mass. When Elizabeth was at court, Queen Mary's husband, King Philip of Spain, fell madly in love with Elizabeth and tried to persuade Mary to reconcile with her sister, but Queen Mary refused. When an uprising started by Sir Thomas Wyatt, was stopped 
Mary automatically thought Elizabeth was the mastermind behind it. Elizabeth taken to the tower. Elizabeth was taken to the Tower of London, and after two months in prison, Queen Mary finally let Elizabeth free. Queen Mary died from complications from childbirth. Elizabeth was crowned Queen of England in 1558, and shortly after her coronation, Queen Elizabeth enacted the Act of Supremacy and the Act of Uniformity, which was a compromise between the religions that couldn't be broken by extremists in the future. King Philip of Spain had used all of England's money and properties to fund his campaigns of war. So Elizabeth I went to war with Spain and arose at the, as the top of the naval as the top naval country in the world as a result of this war. Elizabeth didn't want to share her crown or be a studious wife of a man. Elizabeth was spirited and flirtatious. She was witty and elegant. She had the world at her fingertips and that, and that is the way she wanted to keep it. She had her father, she had seen her father marry several times and the other marriages she had seen had not been had not been the equal partnerships that people of today look for. Elizabeth used her virginity as a tool to help further political alliances without actually getting married. Elizabeth always found a way to break out, to back out of the marriage at the last minute. She was, she was the medieval runaway bride, so to speak. Elizabeth I was thought was Elizabeth I went through several trials to become queen. She did not have a secure family environment. She did not have a good relationship with her siblings or anyone in particular. She was thought of as a bastard child. She couldn't trust anyone, and she was sent to prison, interrogated like a common criminal, and was dis dismissed just as, just as quickly. Nobody ever thought she would be one of the greatest rulers that England would ever know. But by her, <coughs> but by her cunning and witty abilities, Queen Elizabeth I ruled England as the Virgin Queen for over forty years. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>